Hi, it's Tara, travel advisor at Adventures by Tara. I wanted to work with Rita in the marketing business school because I struggled with learning how to effectively market myself and my travel business. I was fairly new to the industry at the time that I met her. I was on a marketing immersion cruise in March of 2023, and lo and behold, Rita was leading our seminar. I knew after listening to her class and getting to know her that I wanted her to be my marketing mentor. In less than a year of being a part of marketing business school, she's taught me where to focus my marketing efforts, why those efforts are so important in the growth of my business. She's helped me understand how to write effective website copy and how to best market my niche. She helped me take a spark of an idea and completely turn it into a very special part of my traveling business. I love that everything she teaches us is relative and is geared to help us where we need it most in our respective businesses. If we need more clarification with something that she's taught us, she's also easily approachable and she's willing to help us all the time. If there's anyone out there hearing my message that feels that they need someone on their side to help them market and improve on their business, don't think twice about working with Rita. Hi friends, Rita here, host of the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. I am super excited to dive in to today's guest expert, Kristen Richards, talking all things branding and web design. But before we jump in, do you hate when I do that? Before we jump in, <laughs> giving you a couple of updates of what's happening on like the travel industry or just business in general. So if you're kind of like, Rita, just give me the meat. I don't want to hear like the updates or just like I'll pay attention to your emails or whatever. So I have been thinking for a couple months now that I should start like a separate podcast feed just with like updates that are happening within the travel industry. If there's a webinar I think you should know about, if there's like if I'm doing something that you should know about, if like a survey is coming out that you should be filling out. There's just so much stuff that happens in the industry, and I love to provide you updates on those here on this weekly platform, but I also know that there's many of you that are just like, just give me the meat. I just want the juice to <laughs> let me drink the juice. And so I am going to test something out and we're just going to see how it works just a little bit where you can sign up for a separate feed. This is a private podcast feed, so you do have to sign up for it separately. It's going to be completely free and we're going to call this feed Read a Mail. And Read a Mail is really going to be conducive of anything that's like travel industry related that's going to help build your business or just anything business related. So any like workshops, webinars, things that are happening that I'm like, you really should know about them. I'm going to add them to this feed. So let's try this out. Just head over to the show description, sign up over there. And then these little episodes on the read a mail feed will really be added when I have something to say, <laughs> when there's like an important update that you should know about and like all the important links and stuff. They like you can just find them over in that. Will I still give a couple of updates here on this weekly podcast episode? I sure will, but it just won't be as extensive. Like sometimes there's so much things that I want to talk to you about, but it can probably take 10 minutes to talk about all the things that are happening and that I want to share with you. So to spare all of you who are just again wanting to get the meat and potatoes of the episodes going, uh, sign up for read a mail. And you can get all of your updates on Rita Mail every single whenever I feel like it. <laughs> all right, let's dive into this week's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I am super excited for today's conversation. If you don't know our guest, her name is Kristen Richards. She's the founder of Inflow Design Co. Uh, formerly, you may have known her company as Girl Boss Designer. And um, another exciting thing, she just, you were living overseas and now you're back in the States. So there's just been a lot of change for you in this, in this past like year <laughs> or so. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know I want to dive in and you want to dive into all things websites. So uh, let's just welcome you to the podcast. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Thank you so much. So excited to chat and be here. Yes. So I guess nitty gritty how did you get from girl boss designer to inflow design co for people that may be like wondering what the change is and if you're doing anything differently because i know 
you do websites, you help with branding, you have website templates. There's a lot of things that you do on like the visual marketing aspect. Yeah. It's literally the same company. I just okay. changed the name. It, even the branding <laughs> is like almost the same. It's funny when we did the whole rebrand, like relaunch, like it uh -huh. looks so, I love the colors. I'm like, it's literally like the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was so I launched Girl Boss Designer back in just a quick little backstory about why we changed the name mm -hmm. back in 2017. At the time, it just like made sense. It was like the whole Girl Boss era. And you know, when like that was right. just like a really big. Oh, yeah. And I Boss wasn't thing. niched into travel yet. Or we also work with coaches, but travel is the main industry we work with. Okay. It was just like women entrepreneurs. So it just like made sense then. And then now it's been years have gone by. We have this travel niche. I've grown up, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like you you evolve with your company. Right. And I got to just a point where the name just felt like unaligned for where we are at now and just continuing to grow and evolve over time. So I was like, I've just got to bite the bullet. I almost did it a few years ago. And I was like, no, it's too established, right? And I'm like, but wait till I'm like 10 years and 15 years down the road. Right. Like I've just got to do it. So Inflow Design Co. just really fits with my values personally, like being in the creative flow, being in your flow. I mean, we can get more into the meaning behind the name if you want, but I know we have a lot of other stuff to cover, but yeah. it was just time for a name that really represented where I'm at now, where the company's at now and more longevity versus, you know, me, little solopreneur, right. Creating a company in the very beginning. Right. I think that like ties in really well. I know we promise we're going to talk into websites, but last year, and I had, I had previewed a little bit of what last year when I had some podcast episodes about talking about websites, saying that you didn't need a website to start selling things within your travel agency. And I kind of feel like there's certain things that hold people back from like making sales in their travel agency. And I feel like a website is one of them. I feel like even a name kind of, I, that's where I feel like the connect is, is like, you want to get all these elements perfect before you start doing the thing. And mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent, like just do the thing. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, don't wait for something to hold you back. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I see clients come to us and they don't want to launch their social media yet until the website's done. And I'm mm -hmm. like, get your socials going. Like, there's no reason why you can't be starting to put your business out there. If you right. don't need the website, the website will definitely help add credibility and all these other great things that I don't know if we're going to get into later, but you can a hundred percent start putting yourself out there, start getting clients without the website. It doesn't have to hold you back because it's also a process which people don't fully understand until they've been through the process. Very much, it, yeah. It takes time. And so why would you want to delay like everything else with creating your business? There's other ways to right. look professional online in the meantime to kind of fill that space. But it's definitely not a reason to hold you back from putting yourself out there and, you know, booking right. travel. <laughs> well, and that's, I was like, we need something to fund what's going to be paying for this rebranding process or new branding process and the website. And so that kind of like helps you again, like now I'm thinking all business minded, like thinking about just running your business pro profitably. Yeah. And instead of like getting into debt with a lot of like the startup costs, just really focus on selling so that you don't have to worry about like, oh, where's this money coming from either. Yeah. And I think everyone's in a different financial position. Right. It's just, it's vastly different. Some, People, the investment's not a problem. They, It's easy for them to do. Some people, it's easy for them to invest in like a template and do it themselves. Some mm -hmm. people need to kind of keep it scrappy at first. It's just like everyone's in a different place. I know like right. I made certain investments later versus at the very beginning and obviously not design because I was doing it myself, but like yeah. maybe hiring other services. But there are things I did invest in at the beginning. So just like analyze, I think like where you're at financially and if the investment makes sense and you can swing it without it being a huge burden, jump in and do it. But it shouldn't hold you back right. from putting yourself out there. Yeah. Right. Because when we're thinking a website, because I have gone through like a full branding process before that it is more than just the website and that yeah. it is a time consuming process. So for those people who are like, I just need a website or a web page, 
what are you describing or what are you meaning is in that process to have an intentional website? Because a website is not just to have a website or an yeah. presence out there. It's to really get clients finding you and eventually to converting into paid clients. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to have the core essence of your brand down. You can't, you need a company name, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to know like who you are as a company, who your ideal client is. What is your niche? Who do you want to work with? Even if you decide, hey, I'm going to be more general at first. I see this a lot where they're like, I don't really know yet. I'm going to let it develop. Right. People in marketing will encourage you or in business to niche down as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to know your values, your mission, like get in there with the company because your website designer is, design is going to need your writing. And right. that all goes into the writing. So people jump from here and go right into design. But in order to do proper writing for your website, whether you're doing it yourself or hiring, you need to have answers for the copywriter when they mm -hmm. want to know about your ideal client, what are their struggles and what are their dreams and what are what is your story behind your brand? And like all of these aspects that go into your writing, which is where a lot of the connection happens. When someone's looking at your website, they may be attracted visually, but then the connection is happening in your messaging. In order to write the messaging, you need to understand who you are as a company. Mm -hmm. And then in order to create branding, because we need your branding also for the website, which would be colors, it would be a logo, font selections. You don't have to go crazy with those. You can keep it simple at first. You can do your, those yourself at mm -hmm. first, but you need to have certain things in place. So people want to jump into this, I need a website, but then they don't understand more the depth of their business in order to build it out properly. Right. I feel like that's where a lot of people's marketing tends to be lacking too, is that they think I just need to make a social media post. I yeah. just need to send an email out but you don't understand what the end goal. So when I had gone and like done rebranding for the travel business, I actually went to like a business astrologer to figure I out. I love that. Who I, did you use? I, I used her name is Leslie Tagorda. <laughs> okay. I think she's B star powered on Instagram. Okay. And so I just purchased like some branding sessions with her where she kind of like just looked at my chart and based so on interesting. my sun, moon, rising, she could pull out like even what some of my branding colors should be. Now, some of it I went with, some of it I didn't. But what I loved about it was that she could pull out like what I pretty much what I am without me like actively knowing yeah. who I was. So like st strategy is a big thing. I'm a creator and not really knowing that, but kind of like seeing that in my chart was really interesting. Yeah. I also work with Nervine Zachary, who does a lot with Clifton Strengths and finding your strengths out. Because sometimes, like, especially when you're talking about that copywriting part, you it's hard to for especially me to articulate like where I'm really good at. So doing some of these things that can help identify. Yeah. And like, oh, yes, this is where my strength. It just helps. It's another like layer. So I don't know. Like, do you recommend people do any sort of exercises like that to kind of like do some of this inner work when they are starting? Not only because it's it's more than just the visual presence. It really is what the messaging that drives your business. Yeah, for sure. Um, so. I think as far as like understanding yourself a little bit better, something that's really helpful is to ask people who know you. Like, yes, you can go hire someone and do like sessions with them. Like that astrologer sounds super cool. Um, but you can also just talk to close friends, family members, people that really know you because it can be hard to analyze yourself and see mm -hmm. yourself in the light that other people see. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great way to pull out like strengths and understanding that aspect. Mm -hmm. Um as far as our process, it, that kind of is woven into branding in a, I didn't even like do it necessarily intentionally. It's just kind of part of my process, I guess, where it's really interesting that usually when people say like, how do I want my brand to feel? That's like one of our questions. I want to know the feeling that they want their business to have. Usually it tends to be connected to their personality. And usually I see that then when I go look at their Pinterest board. So then we go have them do a Pinterest board. Love and it. almost always the colors are connected with 
the feeling that they want to have. And then I've spoken with them by this point. So I already know I'm like, this matches her exactly. It's oh. probably like what maybe the astrology lady could have seen. It's like woven into who you are. Right. There are ways to pull that out and it can be helpful to get like another party to help do okay. that. So for us, it's more through like the branding process that naturally like pulls that out. Um, I know if you're DIYing in our brand your vision course, there's a lot of that in the, there's this whole module about like your core foundations and it goes into like missions, values, the benefits you bring, the outcomes. Um, so a lot of people sell from the features of what they do, mm -hmm. but you need to also sell from the benefits and then what's the domino effect outcomes of that. And so there's a lot in that beginning stage of our branding course that could easily go into your marketing and understanding your branding better. I've had people even that end up signing up as a client. They're like, oh yeah, I did your branding course. They like, they're like, that helped me so much with my website copy or like understanding it. So there are resources out there to help mm -hmm. you dive further, whether it's like a worksheet that you're going through and just finding the right type of thing to help go underneath, asking people that are close to you about your strengths or how would they describe you and stuff like that. It can just, sometimes we get, we don't see our best right. qualities always. Yes. And so yes. <laughs> that's a great like outside perspective. And then if you want to work with like an actual professional and hire someone, it's a great option too. But we need to go inward and examine. Right. And also like, what is my intention with my company? Like, how do I want to run this. I think that's when, um, you know, I had a client, she was in the industry for a while. She was being much more like general travel. Mm. And then she really, actually she did the branding course and she was my client. Nice. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, I really dug deep and realized I only want to do river cruises. Like that is her passion. And she has a partner who really loves ocean cruises. So together they just do cruising. But up until this point, she just hadn't allowed herself to be honest about what she really wanted to be and own it in her brand. And mm -hmm. so after going through that process, now she is like seen as like a top like resource and an expert in that field. It like opens up all these other opportunities where she's on the board of certain things in like the cruising industry. And so she had to go inside and be honest about what she really wanted to do, not operating from like scarcity mindset of I'll just do anything for everyone. Like that is not helping create your brand because then you're literally speaking to no one even though like when you're just beginning you can take on clients whoever you want really mm -hmm. it really comes down to your marketing though right. like I remember someone was like so do you like not work with men because all of our marketing oh. is geared toward women <laughs> yeah especially when it was called girl boss and yeah. I was like yeah we work with men like first of all I'm pretty sure I could get sued if I said no I don't I don't there's probably a legal <laughs> right. thing there but we've definitely had male clients in the travel industry, mm -hmm. but we market toward women. And so I can reach a whole nother level, even just like narrowing down between, you know, men and women or whatever. Right. Um, that allows me to talk to them in a different way. And so that's the same with like your ideal client. When you're creating your messaging for your brand, the more honed in you get, the more specific you can get in your marketing and the more specific you can get and really like illustrate whether it's like their current situation, whether it's like the end results they're wanting to get, the more detailed you can get, the more people are like paying attention and hooked in versus mm -hmm. like being vanilla basically yeah. with your marketing. I don't know if I've answered your questions. I feel like no, I've gone on a I, few different routes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that because I kept thinking about the onion layer exercise and I, I keep telling people like, ask yourself, like, why are you in this business? Then keep asking yourself, why, why, why? Till you get like some sort of like instinctual response. Normally for me, it's like, I, I can feel like something in my chest or I start tearing up and I'm like, oh, that's why. Because it's not, it's not like the easy surface level answer. But I feel also too, when you get to that like core of why you're doing what you're doing and who you want to be serving, it makes things so much easier as far as like who you're talking to, where you're going to find them, where you should be marketing, how you should be marketing, because you know exactly who your people are. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like I had a, actually I was on a consult call with someone, not a consult call. She's a client of ours. We're doing like a strategy call. Mm -hmm. She's, she's a little bit different. She's in like the points and miles travel category. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. a bit different than probably a lot of the listeners who are listening to this, mm -hmm. but you can apply a similar situation. She right. 
we were talking about her messaging. She's doing a semi-custom site. So there's a little more, more strategy involved that I'm involved in. Mm-hmm. And I was just giving her a few extra tips. And I was like, when you get into like their struggles or what they're wanting here in her particular situation, I was like, get really specific. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the emotions? What does it sound like? Like you can literally use five senses in the way that you describe things in your marketing to bring it to life. So she could have easily said, you know, her target audience was moms, most likely in the US that want to be able to travel with their kids more, but they feel like they can't afford it. And so by leveraging like points of miles that they're traveling, they're able to like access all this other stuff. So she, you know, was using things like, are you feeling, you know, stressed with the, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was something about like wanting to like, you know, take these trips, but you can't, it was just very simple and very basic. Right. And I was like, what if you said, are you tired of driving your kids to Florida for every trip that you take once a year? Love it. What if you can fly your family premium to Hawaii? right? What if you could take three trips a year instead of one for the same amount of money and like really illustrate what that means? You know, purchasing five premium plane tickets for your three kids and your husband to go to Hawaii or Europe or whatever, like explore places you've never been and really illustrate that versus just like, do you want to travel more with your family? You know what I mean? Right. And that's, um, I am dubbing 2024 as the year of specificity, specifically when it comes to marketing, because, and and we recently went over like the hood suite social media consumer report where it was saying like people are craving authenticity specifically in social media and they want specificity. So if you're still trying to sell travel with the basis of, I love travel. You should book your travel with me. Like you have no idea who your consumer is because you're not exactly. And that, that statement that you had where you're like, are you sick of driving to Florida for every, like the exact person who is that person's ideal client is going to be like, how did you know that? How did you know I'm tired of driving to Florida? And you could give other examples. Like obviously maybe not every person like Right. It just reminds, that's what I think of because I grew up mainly in the Atlanta area and we didn't have a lot of money at all growing up. So literally we had our maybe one trip a year and we would be like camping or we would like drive to Florida. Like there was no flying, there was no, these other things. So I'm just thinking about her ideal client. That's probably how like they're feeling. So get really illustrated about what they're currently doing. You know, if Mm -hmm. your client is in luxury travel, think about like what's important to them. What are you saving them from specifically? I love that. Yeah. And then use the five senses. I feel like when you bring in a few of the five senses, it just makes it like so much more real. Um, It's also like integrated with more of your mind on a deep. So I'm also like certified in NLP, which is like subconscious programming. Uh huh. Um. So the five, like the five senses, are the are the language of your subconscious mind. I know this is not what we're going to be talking about, but <laughs> it's it's why like getting really specific and bringing it to life connects with people on a whole deeper level and brings in the emotion. Like that's when someone's emotions will get poked, right? Good or bad, right? Because you're really making it real for them. Because I I think like that what we're we're essentially saying is like you have to do some inner work and then (laughs) to loop it all the way back to like (laughs) websites you have to do some inner work and infuse what you have found from that into your copywriting that's really like the star of your website there's I feel like a lot of people think about this thing and that thing but what's really going to sell are the words that are on the page. Am I right? Or am I a hundred percent? Yeah. So, and it's not like people like, Oh my gosh, this is like a lot of work and a lot of inner, like deep work that I need to do before I can even have a website. There's different, it's just not to me. This is as intense as maybe this is like ended up sounding. Um, (laughs) Usually like if you're working with a professional in any way, they have ways to excavate that. So if you're working with a copywriter, they they know to ask certain questions, just like in our design process, we know to ask certain questions to pull out right. the essence of some of those things. But you do need to do the inner work like with your ideal client specifically and who you are as a brand for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as like the website and like what's actually like selling and converting, I like to say, I'm going to make an analogy with like dating. Maybe you were like in a bar and you see this like guy across the room or girl or woman, man, whatever. 
um, you see this person across the room and you're like, they are looking good. Like you are like, a, you are visually, it's all you can work off of right now. You're like mm-hmm. visually attracted. We're like, you like lean in and you like want to learn more. But when you started talking to them, you can now get a vibe of like, that's a definite no. Or right. like, I want to keep talking and I want to learn more. And like, maybe this could be a match. So like your website visuals are like, you across the room and they're like, ooh, like they, they're they like leaning in because they want to learn more. If it looked bad and if they couldn't read anything, they're not even going to read. Mm-hmm. So the visuals are there to really like capture the attention, keep them around to learn more. It also immediately like subconsciously creates like this is a professional business or not vibe from the design, right? If it's if it's the best worded, deep messaging you could ever have, but it, the website looks terrible Uh or it's not legible or there's blurry images or like all these things, you're not going to be taken as seriously. So it's like, you really do need the both. You need, they need the initial attraction of the visuals, but then the messaging is like where they're connecting, where they really understand like who you are, like the value you bring, the benefits of working with you, like how it works. Like, what does this even mean? Because some people don't even really understand a travel advisor. I feel like there's so many people that have no idea what this is. Because when I tell people who we work with, they're like, huh? Like, <laughs> barely anyone knows. I'm having to go tell everyone what a, who, like, what a travel advisor is. Right. So they really don't know. And so that's happens in your messaging. So I see right. people come to the website creation phase and they just want to like, very quickly throw whatever to oh no one reads I hear it all the time no one really reads anymore I don't really want much writing and I'm like that's where like the connection's happening yeah 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 I uh I always I've wanted to do maybe like this will spark like the energy to do it where talking about marketing in the sense of the Spice Girls and you know the Spice Girls there's scary spice sporty spice ginger spice there's all the spices they all have their own unique branding. They're still all the Spice Girls. Yeah. But they're their own individual person. So kind of like thinking with those elements, they kind of talk a little bit differently. They dress a little bit differently. Yeah. So that I love that. Also, like it, it kind of like goes into your website and branding as well. What would you say is like the most important either page or segment that needs to be on the website or that you need to make sure you get right on your website? I don't know if it's necessarily a page because you could even have a one page or website, to be right. honest. It's more scrolling and it's not as ideal for like SEO at all. And mm-hmm. you're limited with how much content you could have. It's not really ideal, but you could have a one pager. Um I don't think it's necessarily the page. I think it's more so making sure people know what you do, who it's for, Mm -hmm. what the benefits are and like how it works. Like those are just like the formula. People like to see how it works. They want to understand what to expect. Right. If they're confused, they're not going to do anything. Right. So it needs to be like clear what you do, who it's for, what are you getting me? Like what are the benefits of doing this? Mm Mm-hmm. What can I expect? How can it work? And then regular call to actions, which would be like a button to contact you. Okay. Like, don't overcomplicate it. Keep it like simple and clear and streamlined. And then strategically, like having ways for people to get on your email list is always email list is always just a good like best business practice because not everyone's ready. Like someone might stumble across you and or maybe was referred to you from someone or someone referred you to them and they get on your website, but they're not like, maybe they're not planning a trip right now, Mm -hmm. but they just happen to find you. Now, if there's a way that they can get on your email list, you're able to stay in touch and nurture that relationship. So Mm -hmm. when they are ready, you're like, they actually remember you and are still aware of you versus like some person that they happen to like glance at. And then it's like long forgotten. So that's the benefit of the email list opt-ins on the website. Um, I know, from just running my business, there are people where I get on consult calls and they've, this one lady, she just booked in actually recently as a client and she, on the call, she holds up all my printed freebies. Like, I'm not even joking. Oh, I no went way. through like, I went through like the, the name, naming business name worksheet, like all I've created like, I stuff it. over the years. <laughs> and it's like, so she has been a part of my brand and actually like doing my free content 
for probably like a year or something like that. And that can be really common where people know of you, but it's just not, it's just the timing. Like I'm not offended if like, it's not the right time or people might end up on your site and it's not the right time. So the email opt-in gives you a way to kind of stay top of mind so that when it is the right time, they actually know who you are. <laughs> kind of like along the lines of the email opt-in, what would you say is one of the top things that travel agents, travel advisors are kind of missing? They're not using to their full advantage when it comes to their website. I would say the blog is something that people don't take very seriously. And I because they don't like understand that. it. They don't understand why they need a blog. No one's going to read it. I'm not a blogger, you know, because when we think blog, we think of like Pinterest recipes or like this, this is the backstory of my trip. Like they need to become a travel blogger all of a sudden. And it's not at all what the blog is. The blog is a great place to show more of your expertise and information. Because what Mm -hmm. I see a lot of the time when people come in to have their website redone a, not every time, but a lot of the time people come with these big drop downs on their menu that goes to all these different destinations and countries and cities and like information overload in their right. main menu. When like, if someone's coming to you to help save them all the time and research, why are we like sending them into all this stuff on your main page? Right. So we like to keep your main menu really streamlined. Love and then it. the blog is a great, sorry, that is my alarm. No. <laughs> Um, the vlog is a great place to expand more into your expertise. Mm-hmm. And it's a way to bring people into your website because it's going to help with your website's SEO. So it's a way that people might trickle into your site is right. with these articles. And then what people a lot of the time don't realize is like you're creating content anyways, whether it's your emails, maybe it's like a newsletter. You don't have to call it a newsletter because I know it sounds really boring. Whatever you want to do with your call your emails right you're sending out email marketing probably most likely you're creating like instagram posts or something at the bare minimum you can take an instagram post and literally just expand on it a little bit more and put it on the blog or vice versa maybe the blog is like your content kickstarter then you take that blog and turn it into two or three instagram posts and an email so for me it's like the podcast is my content Kickstarter that then becomes content elsewhere. So there's a way to integrate it into your marketing where it's all working together, where you're getting all the benefits. So I think people really overlook the blog because they don't understand it. And then they're like, well, I don't want to keep up with it. And I'm like, you're literally creating content anyway. So just put it (laughs) on the blog. And then there's like all these suppliers who are like, you can use our content. Like if you're like, I really don't know what to talk about. You have so many resources at your fingertips that people forget about. Yep. And just adjust what they're saying on like their different webinars or anything or rewrite it or use AI to give you like the main points and write it in your point of view. There's so many different ways to make the blog easy. Mm -hmm. I'm all about like systems and making things simple and easy. Oh yeah. And so you can really work at it just into your content creation strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think the blog is more of a tool, kind of like how we use social media platforms as tools. You have to see like your blog as that for this like evergreen content that's going to be on your website. And it's not necessary. Yes. You're putting out content on your website every single week on your blog and all that, but you also have to look at it. Like that's what the search engines are scoping for. So the more active that you are, the more like keywords that you're putting in, the easier it yeah. is to find you. And I'm some people get overwhelmed, about- like keywords and and like, okay, so don't like obsess with keywords. I don't even do keyword research for my blog post because I just mm-hmm. like don't. I mean, it would probably be better if I did, but I'd rather be active than like allow all right. these things that I think I have to do to like right. slow me down. Right. So we also post like all of our, I know this is like, I'm going to relate it back to travel, but like in our blog, a main thing that the main thing that we post to our client reveals. So all of the designs mm-hmm. that we do become a blog post. Love so it. can you turn like your client trips into yeah. blog posts? Like how do you take aspects of your business that are already happening, right. and create a system about turning it into a blog post? 
I feel like just systems make everything easy and then it becomes plug and play. And then when you have, you have an assistant, they can do the blog. I haven't touched our blog in years because it's like systematized with like how it gets created. <laughs> and then all of a that. sudden it goes on to Pinterest and then you get traffic from Pinterest. So there's like so many benefits. Right. And it can be a lot easier than people thinking they need to be a travel blogger now. Right. Because I, I think of a blog, it's one of the pieces or one of the forms of like macro content that you can make so many smaller pieces of content from. Yeah. So if you're like focused on doing the smaller pieces of content first, like your social media, kind of switch that that switch yeah. in your brain to like focus on the bigger pieces. And then the smaller ones get just so much easier to make and you get clear sure. there. Yeah. 100%. What would you say kind of like on this? I know we always like talk about like the right things, but what are, where, where are the places that people have blinders on? So what is probably the number one mistake if you're looking at travel advisors websites that they're making right now? Oh gosh. Number one, if I had to pick one, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like go through my head of like recent ones I've maybe seen and think of, I don't, I don't know if I could pick one. I'm just going to give you some because yes, I don't yes, know if I could pick it. one, to be honest. <laughs> I think just like quickly, some very common mistakes that I see are they barely have any writing. It's mm -hmm. literally like almost nothing. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this information? It's like the most basic, like few sentences on each page. Literally, uh -huh. I go to one page wow. and it's literally like a paragraph of something. It's very, very, there's not enough content. That's a big okay. one I see when we're redoing a website okay. and then they're having, you know, using our templates and our process. And I'm like, you have a lot more content to fill in because this is what our template was designed for. And so they have to like create all this content that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Um, also what we kind of mentioned earlier with like the drop downs of all the pages, I see that often where it's like, it drops down to North America, South America, Africa, and then goes to all these different oh, like yeah. countries and all the info. I'm like that, all that could be great for the blog, right. but like it, that's, you're literally getting people lost in your main pages and how are they ever understanding what you do? Right. So really keeping it focused on only your most important things in the pages is a big one. That might be the most, well, I think lack of content Okay. and inf it's like lack of content and information overload. It's like right. they're on, they're both on, but it's like <laughs> not, not so the long. right kind of information. It's like right. they have too much of the wrong information yeah. on the website. Yeah. Yes. And of course, if the design looks bad, I mean, that's a big no, no, but um, I mean, Anyone who's coming to us to have their, their website redesigned, it, it's for a reason, probably because it looks bad. <laughs> yeah, it or, looks bad or they yeah. stitched it together or maybe they had a Canva one pager and they're ready to upgrade the experience that they have. But yeah, I think that irks me a lot. Like when I go to any website and they have 50 million like different tabs and resources and things and I'm like, I don't even know. I, I'm just going to go away because you've given me a lot more options than what I needed. Yeah. Make it easy for people to like understand what you do and then to mm -hmm. take the action you want them to take versus going off into all of this extra content. I mean, there's basics like, of course, it needs to be mobile friendly. I feel like nowadays it's like, duh. But like if your <laughs> website's not, that's like a major no, because half the people are going to be on their phone. Usually when I look at stats, it's around like give or take 50% of people are on phone or computer. Mm -hmm. And so that can be something, especially I think when you, uh, someone's DIYing, if they forget to look at that and clean it up, that's mm -hmm. a big no, no. Um, but yeah, I think the most common, like beyond design uh -huh. would be not enough content or inform too much of the wrong content. Right. Right. Cause I think you have to like kind of reframe it to that the content, the words on your website are working for you. And yeah. so you need to have as many, as many as it is to get your point across. Yeah. And then something that people sometimes don't realize is like, yeah, it's a lot of work to, I know we're talking about writing so much in this, but it like, it's such a major component of right. the website. It can be, it is a lot of work to create the website copy, whether you do it yourself or whether you invest the money there's a lot that goes in there, but it's not just for the website. You can recycle all of your writing into like, there's so many times where I'm like, I don't know what to talk about in an Instagram post. And I'm like, I'm just going to copy literally a paragraph from my website Love and it. post it as a caption, or you can turn it into like, 
if we're talking about email marketing, you can do like a follow-up automated series, Mm -hmm. like use your website copy. It's, it's, it's going to help your business in all these other areas and make Mm -hmm. it easy for you. So it's not just for the website. Yeah. Oh gosh. I love that. That's like a power tip there. (laughs) Now, um, I know like we are at time here, but just spoiler (laughs) alert for everybody, Kristen will be coming on prep for way week later this year. Um, so just put your feelers out there if you want to hear more of Kristen and talking about branding and websites, but I know you have a couple of resources that you wanted to share with everyone that we're going to link up. Um, something about websites, mis- website mistakes and how to prepare for your website. Can you talk briefly about those? Yeah. So I created a guide. I forget what exactly what the guide is called. It's something <laughs> about like top, I don't know if there's a number on it, top travel advisor website mistakes. We've talked about some of them mm-hmm. in this, but there's more on there. So it says the most common ones that I've seen over the years and then what to do instead, because it's like, okay, great. This is the mistake that I'm making, but what do I do instead? So it goes through, it's a little like PDF guide that walks you through. This is the mistake. This is why it's not a good idea. And this Mm -hmm. is what you want to do instead. Um, The other one is I have a workshop. Actually, there's two different resources about preparing for the website, but I think something that's really helpful is our, it's a five-day workshop. They don't have to do it in five different days. It's just five different videos. Okay. And it walks you through a lot of the questions or things you might be wondering about creating a website. Like, what do I need for the website? What about all the tech? Like, tech is a big thing. Like, there's these different platforms. Right. Like, how does it work with, like, calendar systems and, like, you know, people booking appointments or email yeah. marketing or what is all expected of me when I go into the website creation phase or like what are all the different options? Like so much of the basics of understanding what this process is about is covered in that workshop. It just, I feel like gets you educated because so many people just have no idea. I get on console calls all the time and they're like, why would you know? Like if you've never made a website before, like, why would you know these things? And so right. it just walks you through a lot of essentials of what you would need to know going into this process. There is also a checklist because it's my, I don't remember exactly what I listed out for you that I have. Uh-huh. There is there is also a website creation checklist. It's basically our launch process. It's literally all the things that we do from like start to finish with creating and then launching a website. Mm-hmm. So you can literally see the checklist of everything that's involved. So that paired with like the little workshop videos. Yep. You'll be good to go. You'll be good to know like which direction am I going to go? Am I going to DIY or hire someone? You know what you need to prepare. One tip I will give, I know we've talked a lot about like all the stuff that goes into the website. Mm -hmm. Some people make the mistake of I'm going to get all this stuff ready. And if they know they want to hire someone, then I'm going to find the designer. But you really need to be thinking ahead if you're ever hiring a professional Right. If you're hiring someone that's good, probably they have clients already. Let's be right. real. And so you need to get on their schedule. Yes. And so it's really good to like, if you are going to hire, to make those connections, get a plan together. They can help you throughout the process of preparing versus thinking, I'm not even going to do anything XYZ about a website until I have all this stuff done. They mm-hmm. all kind of like work together if you are hiring help. Same thing with a copywriter. If you're Hiring a copywriter, they're probably booking a little bit in advance. And so you want to always be like reaching out and finding your people before you're ready to like actually do it. Right. Because you're not going to be like ready to do it anyway. Like you need to have your stuff in order and they can help guide you. Yeah, I was going to say it. it, You need at least six months, as I would say, because I know for some designers and copywriters, it they might be booked out that far in advance. So if you're thinking like, okay, I need a website and I'm going to hire somebody tomorrow. It's, it's not that simple sometimes. It's like somebody out tomorrow. Yeah. My rule of thumb is like absolute minimum, like three months. And that's if like everything just happens to move like pretty quickly and they happen to have availability and it all just like goes through minimum three months Yeah, for sure. Love it. So what's the best place for people to follow you so that they can stay tuned if they're wanting, if they're interested in hiring a brand designer like yourself for their own branding and website? So you can find us on Instagram at inflowdesign.co. So there's a little dot before the co. And then at our website at um, inflowdesignco.com. When you go to inflowdesignco.com, it'll like 
defer you into a few directions. You just select the travel one. We have like a website that's only for our, tra our travel people. That's where the shop is. That's only for the travel people. Um, so that's where you want to like head once you get to the little landing page. It kind of like Perfect. sends you to the right direction. Perfect. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for being here. And thanks for your time and sharing with us all today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Travel Advisors. We'll see you next week.